I would like to talk a little bit about exoplanets. And the definition of an exoplanet is simple. It is simply a planet that is not part of the solar system. It's not one of the eight planets of the solar system. So these are planets defined as being planets according to what we define the planets in the solar system as, but they are, are orbiting other stars. And so this is a very exciting and very new area of research. We have the very first discovery uh, of a, an exoplanet, probable exoplanet in 1988, the first confirmed discovery in 1992, and, and then a, a smattering of discoveries following the radial velocity method, which is in red here. This is the year 2000. We have a, a few discoveries, and, and then it starts to getting increased as the radial velocity method becomes a, um, a tried and true method in discovering more and more uh, exoplanets, and that has continued here. Another method called the transit method has basically taken over and have, uh, the number of discoveries and provided thousands of discoveries per year in the 2010s, uh, the 20 uh, teens here, starting about 10 in 2010 up to 2017 and, um, uh, and beyond. So those two methods I will talk about. The other methods, microlensing, direct imaging. This is looking at a planet directly and, and seeing it or, uh, orbiting uh, a star and other kinds of things. Uh, are account for a very small number of the detections and uh, for that reason and reason of time I will not include those. So the radial velocity method is straightforward. This is this, just like with binary stars. If you have a, a planet here that we don't see but it's pulling and tugging on the star and orbiting as it orbits around it the star will be coming towards us and th therefore its spectrum will be blue shifted by the Doppler effect. That means all the lines of the spectrum of that star, even though we don't see the planet, the star is moving towards us a little bit and all the lines are shifted toward the blue part of the spectrum. And in the other part of the orbit, all the lines are shifted to the red part of the spectrum. So if we can measure the spectrum of the star very precisely, then we can measure this shift over the period of several years or uh, possibly or a period of days, depends on the uh, period of the planet in its orbit around the star. So this is the stellar wobble or the radio velocity method uh, due to the fact that uh, the planet and the star act kind of like a binary system and are affected by each other's gravity. So the other method that uh, accounts for the bright green ones we have here is the transit method, which has been most successful using the Kepler satellite, the HARPS uh, observatory on the ground has done a lot of work in, in discovering about 100 exoplanets. The Kepler satellite has discovered uh, thousands of exoplanets and, and a couple of thousand of exoplanet candidates as well. And this method involves the simple idea that if I can measure the brightness of a star, over a period of a long, long time and in a very constant way, then if a planet moves in front of it, it will block the brightness of the star a little bit, not very much, it will be uh, a, a small percentage, a percent or less of the uh, brightness of the star will be faded away because the planet simply blocks that. And um, we are in effect in the shadow of the planet and once the planet orbits around, it will 
then come out from behind the star or from in front of the star, go behind the star, come in and do it again. And if this happens on a very repeatable time scale, the, uh, this can be confirmed as an exoplanet and the period of the orbit can be measured. And so uh, the um, uh, transit method has been very successful at the discovering exoplanets and the Kepler satellite in particular is so uh, it has done so. So if we look at the Milky Way galaxy in this diagram, the Kepler search space shows that what we what Kepler does is it looks at a particular or did look at a particular field of view in the constellation of Cygnus over a million stars, or roughly a million stars, and constantly looking at their brightness for several years. Anytime a planet moved in front, the drop in brightness was measured, and if three of those were measured in, in, during that time period, a confirmation was made and a planet was found. Otherwise, if a couple of them were done, and then um, it was still considered a planet candidate and needs more observations. But this shows that planets and planet candidates were found out to a fairly large distance, but only in one direction because this is the direction of the Kepler satellite. So there will be many more interesting detections to come in the future. To summarize the Kepler observations, we could look at a diagram showing the orbital period in days. So the um, uh, Earth would be out here because the Earth's orbiting the Sun in taking uh, 365 days. The size in proportion to Earth, 1, 4, 10, and 20, show that there are lots of Earth-sized planets that have been detected. And these have been broken up into various groups. We have the... Um, well, first of all, the fact that Kepler could not detect planets with orbital periods that were too long because the mission was only able to observe the Cygnus region for so long. And so uh, orbital periods greater than about uh, a thousand or so days were not detected. Uh, and so, um, or even shorter, the places that, that we have been able to observe very short periods, especially, and or very high uh, mass or, or large stars. So this is the frontier. This is where we haven't been able to observe yet. These are the Earth-sized planets at Earth orbits and further. So this is what's really a uh, very interesting place. Very short periods. We have lava worlds with just one day periods very quickly orbiting around there and very nearby their star. Hot Jupiters, very massive planets that are uh, the mass of Jupiter or even more orbiting at one, two, three, or five days in that, re uh, uh, in that region uh, around their star. These are worlds that we don't have in our own solar system. We have rocky planets in this region, ocean worlds, also not what we have in our own solar system. Ice giants, those we do. Um, the ice giants would be have to be far enough out from their system, the ocean worlds a little bit closer in. The cold gas giants, as opposed to the hot Jupiters, this we're familiar with. These are our Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus and Neptune-like planets. So um, this shows the different colors show the different kinds of methods used to discover them and these are the regions that we find interesting kinds of uh, possible worlds.